When I think about a function, I like to think about a box. The box tends to hide what's on the inside from the outside. Now, this particular box has a door with a handle, and what we can do with it is we can input arguments to it, and then we can output a result of it. So we have a way of communicating with this box back and forth. But notice that when we view it from the outside, we don't quite see what is on the inside. Now imagine that we want to send some values to the box. For example, we have the number 5, we have the number 6, we want to send both of these into the box. We would close the door, something would happen, and then all of a sudden a number would pop out, the number is 11. So what happened in the background is that the two numbers got added, but we never got to see that. This is why we are using this box analogy for a function. And this is just what functions do in any programming language. In a way, they keep code, pieces of code together, and they separate it physically from code which is on the outside. Such code can be recycled many places. We can do all sorts of stuff which we would not be able to do unless our code is inside of a function. An analogy which is very similar to a function from real life, which I really like, is to think about a vending machine. Imagine you approach a vending machine, you put in some coins, you make a selection, you start hearing sounds and things, but you don't really know what is happening in the background, and all of a sudden, hmm, something pops out, and it's whatever you paid for. You don't really know what happened in the background. So the vending machine is like a black box, which you can control by inputs and receiving outputs, but you're not really seeing the, its inner parts. This is JavaScript 3D Code World. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would like to see more videos like this. Functions have many important parts, and one of the most important parts is the function body. So every function will have a function body. The function body itself would contain statements, which we would go through once the function is invoked. And the key thing about this part of the function is that the function body contains code that can be reused multiple times inside of a program. So this is the key part about a function, and this is why we use functions in programming. A function allows us to keep pieces of code together, access them whenever we decide to run them, and then go back to the initial place in the program. Something else that functions have are parameters. Now, what are parameters? Parameters allow us to send values to the function, which we can then process inside of the function, and control it. So we use parameters as a way to import external values into the function during a function call. Something else that a function would have, which is again very useful, is a way to communicate back to the outside world. And this is what we use the return statements for. So return statement, somewhat similar to a parameter, is a way to communicate with the outside world. In this case, it allows us to send values back to the caller location. So we use return statements as a way to export values back to the function call location. Typically, when we would want to use a function, we would invoke it from a place in the code, the function would run, and then it would send something back to the place which invoked it from. So to have a function, we also have to give it a name so that we have a way of referring to it, and we would also use a function keyword to define the function as such an entity, as an entity which we would want to save in our program, in memory, so that we can use it and invoke it. So there are many ways of declaring functions in JavaScript, and in this video I would only discuss one of these. This is function declarations. So notice there is other ways of forming functions. Function expressions are another very common way of defining a function, but in all cases we would define a body in memory which would have specific features associated with it. So what happens when we declare a function? We have already seen the black box, but what we should also be visualizing in our minds is the fact that the function itself would be a body in computer memory. Okay, so the function is an object. It is almost like a regular object with just a few additional properties associated with it, which give us additional capabilities. So what are these properties? One of them would be a formal parameters, internal property. This is where the parameters of the function will tend to live. We also have an XMAScript code property. This is where the body of the function will tend to live. And then we have a call method, and this is what really makes a function. 
it is this internal call method which is allowing us to, to call the function from outside of it so that we can start using formal parameters and the function body to do something for us while sending arguments to the function. If we will think about the other way in which we were uh, seeing the function before with function name, parameters, and body, you can sort of envision that the parameters part of what we had before directly relates to the formal parameters internal property, and then the body itself directly relates to the ECMAScript internal property. So when we use function declarations, there is a specific syntax that we need to follow. That does make sense. We have to use syntax so that in the background, the JavaScript engine understands what we want to do. So the syntax for this type of a function declaration is function keyword followed by a name, which is an identifier, followed by parameters placed in parentheses. Note that we can have no parameters or many parameters. If we have more than one parameters, they would be separated by commas, and we can end with a rest parameter if we like to. All of this will be followed by a body. Internal to the body, we will have quite a lot of freedom in terms of what we can define. So we can have variable declarations, we can have other statements, we can have a return expression. So let us illustrate this syntax with a simple example so that we can get a better visual of what a function declaration actually looks like. Over here we have a simple function called fun1 which accepts a couple of parameters a and b. We have a very simple function body. All it contains is a return statement in which we are adding the values of a and b and returning them back to the calling location. The calling location is at the very bottom of this code where we have a fun one invocation. This is the identifier of the function and the numbers five and 10, which are the arguments that we will be sending to that function. So we have a function keyword followed by a function name. Fun1 is the function name. Now this is required when we are dealing with function declarations. A and B in this case would be the function parameters. Return A plus B would be the function body. Having a return statement in a JavaScript is optional. So a function in JavaScript would always return something. If we don't have a return something, what the function would return would in fact be undefined. So if we want to return something specific in JavaScript, we in fact have to explicitly state what expression resulting to a value do we want to send back to the caller location. Now, something else which I like to do, which is not typically done, is to go a bit further and try to understand even better what happens with our source code when we try to define a function. And what we'll view now is an example of an abstract syntax tree, which is a tree structure which is used by the JavaScript engine when the code is run. So an abstract syntax tree is formed during the parsing process where we take our source code, which is really starts off at a string so that it becomes into something a bit more usable to the program. So if we take the same function, we are showing the function declaration in yellow and then the function invocation at the bottom in light blue. So if we will go to the next page, we would see the abstract syntax tree that corresponds to exactly the same code that we just looked at. Now, if you're interested in abstract syntax trees, you should go to the axtexplorer.net, which is a great website, which is very useful for converting JavaScript source code into such tree structures, which are very useful if you want to learn what are the components of programs as far as the JavaScript engine is concerned. Now, this is a bit of a complicated view. So what I've done is I have simplified it so that we don't deal with as many variables. Nonetheless, in this case, we have a tree structure and the bit that we are interested in more specifically is the bit on the left. This is the function declaration. So you can see that we have a function declaration on top as a node, which has three children, ID, parameters, body. Look at the colors in this case. The parameter is shown in blue. Compare what we see on the tree structure on the right to the source code on the left. This is pretty much the same structure shown in a slightly different way. 
Now the reason why I'm showing you all of this is because in fact when we form our function body in memory it will be these nodes which will be recorded in those hidden values that we discussed. So the formal parameters hidden property would, would directly point to the parameters node in the AST tree and the ECMAScript hidden property would directly point to the body node of the AST tree structure. So as you can see functions have quite a few moving parts in the background. So calling a function is not a simple thing and it is very important for us to get a good feeling for how this actually works so that we can understand our programs a lot better. We, we've already seen this view. We form a function. A function is an entity. It's an object which resides in memory. So this is one aspect of what a function is. But something else which is important is that a function is a callable object. So in fact, we have a way of inputting values to it and then outputting values out of it. So this is another aspect of what a function is. It is also important for us to understand that this occurs via function invocation, which occurs outside of the function. So there is a link between outside code and inside code. And this is done via the call method which is part of the function object itself. So we would have an outside code which calls a call method on the body of the function which then makes everything happen and, and makes the wheels turn so that we can return a value back from the function. Now in addition to that there is a few more things that have to happen. A function has to be a black box when viewed from the outside. The function has to also be able to run code and track variables. The functions also have to be able to take control from the color location and then give back control to the color location once it's done running. So we have a lot of controls that need to happen in the background in order for functions to effectively work. Let us say a few more words about function invocation. What happens when we in fact invoke the function? As I said before, invoking a function occurs outside of the function itself. So we are calling an object in memory, we are sending some arguments in it, the object will do some stuff with them and then it will give us a result back. So to view this let us once again look at the same code we were looking at before. As a reminder we are looking at the bottom part of the code here where we have this fun one in parentheses 5 comma 10. Now what happens in this case? Well the 5 and the 10 would be arguments and we can think of them as just the values which would be sent to our box before the function is invoked. We can show this in a slightly different way. So what we are doing is we are sending these arguments to the function. At this stage those things are called arguments. The function takes them. The moment the function absorbs these values become parameters. These values become parameters so they are identifiers a and b with these given values. In this case we are told to add them up and then return this value 15 back to the caller function. We do that using our visual metaphor. This is the same as opening the door of the box and then getting back the result 15. Notice that there is a disjunct between what happens outside of the function and what happens inside of the function. Outside of the function when we invoke it, we are invoking it using arguments. Inside of the function, the arguments will be called parameters. There are quite a few things that happen in the background when code is run. One thing that has to happen is we have to set up a global environment where the source code will run. The entire source code that we have written on the left hand side of the screen has to be placed somewhere. It will be placed in something called a global environment. The next thing that we have to happen is that we have to create a function object, store it somewhere in memory, get a reference to that object, place it in a variable, fun one, so that we have access to that object from the global environment. We have to invoke the function from the global environment using the call internal method of the function object in memory that we just created we have to create a separate function environment afterwards so that we can separate what happens in global space to what happens in function space. The arguments that we send to the function need to be converted to parameters to be used inside of the function. 
and then these need to be added to this new function environment that we created. So notice there is a lot of things happening here. We have to transfer control to the function so that it can evaluate the statements in its body. We have to determine what is the return value and then send it back to the global environment. And when we do this, we have to transfer control back to the global environment. So notice there is a lot of moving parts here. There will be a separate video, which will be called Understanding Functions, JavaScript Part 2, which will be going in all of these details. What we will do in this case is see what happens once we go inside of the function. So we would enter the function scope and then see what happens once we go inside the function itself, where we would get a room-like environment, which is important for us to understand how functions work. Please hit subscribe if you would like to see more content like this from us.